ladies and gentlemen. We are here, Corker Comics in Miami, 107th and 8th Street, to talk about Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots, Wazer, battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons, the Transformers. <laughs> Robots in disguise. Come on, dude. Transformers. Da, 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 da. One and I are the same age. We were both children of the 80s, and clearly he is not. I love Transformers. As much of a Transformers fan as me. He must have been watching G.I. Joe when I, I was I watching don't, Transformers. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. Shut up. He Man's great. That's another thing. All the other He Man was good. He Man's great. <laughs> but we can't talk about it. We're here to talk about Transformers. Yes. But before we talk about Transformers, just some news happening. If well, you... this, I'm Steve Corka, the thing. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. And then I'm, I refuse I'm, to say I'm, my I'm, name. I'm, 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 I'm Stephen Corka. I'm Juan. Yes. Corka. It, yes. No. Faraj. Yes. All right, and we're here to talk about Transformers. We are live here. If the neighbors come by and yell at us and we have to take a break, say, shh, we will. But anyways, so before we get started on Transformers, let's talk about news, exciting things, well, ex crazy things that happened. The directors to Han Solo, this is old news now to the internet, but the directors of Han Solo were fired mid-production. Mid Ron Howard took over production. What do you think? Ron Howard is an awesome director. Ron Howard is a great director, but what do you think about the firing? Like, this does not happen often, nor does it happen no, on a big budget flick. No, and especially not at the point they were within the movie. That just... Who knows? I know. Big news. Crazy. Well, I mean, I, it, it, you know, it, they did something similar to Rogue One, but they didn't fire the director. They just brought in another director to do reshoots. Right. And the original director still got credit. Ron Howard is coming in midway through... Uh, I've heard rumors that uh, these brothers, it's the guys that did the Lego movie. Yeah. Yeah, they fired them and they, and uh, because of creative differences, because Lawrence Kasdan, who's the script writer on Han Solo, also mm -hmm. Empire Strikes Back, Return Jedi, Force Awakens, um, and Kathy Kennedy, the producer of everything Star Wars, just uh, didn't like the direction he was going. And they also, I also heard a rumor that the guy playing Han Solo needs acting classes. He's just not that good. He doesn't portray a young Harrison Ford the same way right. that, that we would expect. So, I don't know. I mean, Scary. I'm still going to watch the movie. Of course. I'm sure it's still going to be great. It's Disney. Um, but I mean, they fired... This is not... This is not a, I mean, it is very unusual, but not unusual for Disney. I mean, they did the same thing to uh, Edgar Wright uh, for they, Ant Man. Yes, but that was pre-production, not in the uh, middle of shooting the damn movie. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that was that happened. What else happened? Uh, anything else crazy happened? No, not really. Nothing I can think of. Nothing I can think of either. But uh, anyway, I'm sure other things happen. But we just whatever. We don't have our our devices with us. So please comment if something we're missing. But anyways, um, we got we got a guest cinematographer producer with us. Susie's out today because uh, she's probably taking a half naked photo somewhere. So uh, instead, we have uh, ESPN's very own Randall. Here uh, to to fill in for us, Randall. Just say hi. Hello. All right, that's Randall, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, anyways, uh, we're here to talk about Transformers: The Last Night. Give our Corker Comics review, real quick. Weekend is over. Lowest opening weekend in the Transformers franchise, just under seventy million. I saw. And uh, speaking of box office, Wonder Woman has surpassed Batman vs Superman after this weekend domestic box office. So, congrats to Wonder Woman, but we're not here to talk about that, bitch. We're here to talk about Transformers. Now, real quick, spoilers. There's going to be spoilers all over the place. A lot of spoilers. Have, there's going to be a lot of foul language, probably. We had a comment last week oh, about, about a child watching, and, and we got in trouble for that. Not so, for children. Um, no, it's, I mean, unless you're that kind of liberal household that doesn't mind fuck shit, bitch, asshole. But anyways, we are going to be cursing up a storm. It's explicit. We are here to talk about Transformers, The Last Night. Um, also known as Transformers 5. So, uh, what would you think, Juan? Oh, it was horrible. I agree. It was... and, and the only reason, unlike, so during the Mummy I went to sleep, because it was really bad, and the only reason I couldn't sleep on this one, because not only was it bad, it was so fucking long. It was so, so long. So my ass was hurting so much that I couldn't fall asleep. To, to be fair, it was shorter than the average Transformers movie. It was like, it, it was a little over two and a half hours, the other Transformers movies like, were like close to three hours, if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, it was horrible. There were so many like random... It, it, it was, it, it, it's like Michael Bay wanted to make... It's like, here's Michael Bay. I really wanted to make Braveheart. So right. let me make 
my version of Braveheart with Transformers. I really wanted to make a World War II movie. So, let me do a Nazi He, he means all this is in there. Like, all this is actually yeah. in there. I really wanted to do, like, this funny, like, Latin, Caribbean, you know, comedy. Yeah, why the fuck is Cuba in this movie? I, why is John Turturro yeah. in Cuba in the movie? Yeah, and then they're, like, playing soccer or some bullshit. I, I don't know. I don't know. Ba basically, okay. So, I And then, you know what's funny, though? What? Is, uh... They actually mention, so they're mentioning uh, there's a secret society that protects protects the identities of Transformers, right? Apparently, yes. And all the things Transformers did, like fight in World War II, kill Hitler, right? They like kind of just mentioned Harriet Tubman, yes. but there was no actual scene. No. Because I believe that Michael Bay does not know any actual black people. <laughs> and he knows Tyrese. I mean, have you heard the way his Transformers talks? That didn't bother you a little bit? You talking about in the previous movies? No, in this one even. There's no ghetto. Transformers. Oh, there's some ghetto Transformers. Are there? Absolutely. Wow. It was horrible. It, it, Harriet Tubman's in Transformers, guys. Yeah. Apparently, Hitler was killed by a transforming clock. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and the the whole opening scene looks like something on a Braveheart or some Excalibur movie, but not as oh, good. Oh, that's right, because it's the medieval... The King, yeah, King the, Arthur is Yeah, it's the King Arthur is and in Merlin. it. Merlin, who's apparently a, a fraudulent, drunk... With not even a wizard, and uh, he's given this staff, and uh, it's got magical powers and whatever the hell. It was just, it's just so bad. It's so bad. And then for whatever reason, I don't know what. What was the name of the fourth movie? I don't remember. Dinobots. Well, well, no, what was after Dark of the Moon? It was Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon, and the one with dinosaurs. And Mark Age, Wahlberg's first Age one. Of Extinction, Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction. Thank you. Age of Extinction. I forgot how that movie ended, but however it ended, apparently this movie starts with Optimus Prime frozen in space, just floating off to God knows where. Mm. Um, Earth is like, Chicago's like all, like, quarantined off. Yeah, it got wrecked in the other movies. Yeah, and I guess they never repaired it. All right. the Transformers are out loud and on the hunt by some off-the-books, non-governmental agency that hunts Transformers. You, need to, you clarify, for some reason, the Autobots are being hunted, yet... Oh, uh, yeah, yet the agency teams up with the Decepticons. They team up with the Decepticons because like, it's not like the Decepticons did anything the previous four movies. Not to mention, <laughs> Me Megatron is in the movie, which, if I remember correctly, at the end of Age of Extinction, they had Megatron's head, which they turned into Galvatron, which, if you remember... Mm -hmm. Didn't even transform correctly. It was like this pixelated transformer thing that moved around right. and formed it. That's all gone. Galvatron is not existent. The little pixelated transforming is gone. Megatron is back all of a sudden. At least he's only back for like three minutes. It's. I, I don't even. Optimus Prime was in this movie like five minutes. Optimus Prime was in it. There was hardly any transforming. No, yeah. Like, instead, like, Bumblebee gets pulled apart, and then he, get, like, magically comes back together, kind of like how Iron Man's suit does in Iron Man 3. Yeah, that was funny. Um, it's, the, the, these knights that are protecting, like, everything don't even look like Transformers. They look like statues that just so happen you, to... You need to clarify, the these people have no idea what we're talking about. There's these knights that, that, that are in the movie that, that are protecting this staff. And, oh, and the last knight, the title of the movie, it's Mark Wahlberg. No. He acts and talks like Mark Wahlberg. He doesn't even play a character. He's just Mark Wahlberg in it, that movie. It's horrible. And, and the girls are beautiful, and there's no ugly people. Pointless. Why was that little girl in that movie, the 12-year-old? It's so pointless. I don't know. I don't know why she was in it. And like she was like... Cybertron like basically comes... Because Optimus is floating in space, and then he just coincidentally, frozen Optimus, crash lands on Cybertron. Thaws out... You know, out of everyone in the universe, he just miraculously lands on Cybertron. Right. And then this, like, woman with, like, these, like, tentacles named Contessa, I think her name was. Yeah, it was Contessa. She... Or, like, I like to say Cortana. Yeah. Halo. She she makes Optimus into Nemesis Prime. She, she's really Cortana from Halo. I, I never played Halo. Uh, well. But convinces Optimus to go back to Earth and destroy it because Earth is... The opposite of Cybertron. You guys Earth, know what that means? Earth is Unicron. Let me repeat that. Earth is Unicron. 
So you see these, in the, if you remember the previous, these horns that come up. Those are Unicron's horns. This is really hard for me, man. <laughs> it's Not because it's Unicron, because you hate the movie so much. That's usually me. I don't know what to do. I, it gets worse, because... Go ahead. The girl... There's a girl in the movie from England who apparently is the final descendant of Merlin, who is the only one that can hold the staff that was given to Merlin way back in the Dark Ages. She's a professor of, I forget what the fuck, over at Cambridge or some shit like that. And she's driving this little Euro trash car that all of a sudden becomes this amazing like Lamborghini, which, guess who it is? It's Hot Rod. Hot Rod. But... <laughs> They fucked him up. He's French. He's French. He's French. He's like, wait, I, I am hot yeah. rod. I am uh, wee, wee, wee. And he's French because he says he likes the accent. Like Hot Rod, who becomes Rodimus Prime in the cartoon, leader of the Autobots, sus, uh, su 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 successor to Optimus Prime. Uh, yeah. Now, now, Batsy over here hasn't seen the movie, and we're totally spoiling it for him, but I think he's really upset. I, I, I doubt he's, I think he's going to wait for video. Anthony Hopkins is in it. Anthony Hopkins is in it. And with Anthony, a non-transforming robot. I, yes, with like a guy that that's looks like... That's a ninja. Like, that's a ninja. And who, schizophrenic. Four foot tall. Yeah, he's schizophrenic for no reason. Oh! At one point in the, no, no, at one point in the movie, he gets shot out of a, he shoots himself out of a submarine to go get fish. To, to make go fishing, sushi. To go fishing. To yeah. go su oh, and to make sushi. Might, might add, the sub looks like something out of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Right. So there's another movie Michael Bay wanted to make and didn't make. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You know made. what else Michael Bay hasn't made that wants to make? A good movie. A good movie, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, uh -huh. Jinx, personal jinx. Don't, don't touch me. Well, Painting yeah. Game was pretty good, sorry. Somebody on, on uh, Instagram, Tony H4781, is saying uh, that in the cartoon, they did that plot where Earth was Unicron, too. Which cartoon? In, uh, the cartoon, dude. What do you mean, which cartoon? Yeah. The cartoon. But there's been different in no, I mean, incarnations I didn't, of it. I didn't see that. If we're talking the old school 1980s one, I don't remember that. I don't one. remember that. But I, thanks, Tony. I don't remember that at all. I, I don't say you're lying or full of shit, but... but, but uh, No, because I remember you... Unicron was always his own planet. Unicron was his own planet. Yeah. He got his head cut off. And I remember that yeah. one episode where Starscream was going to take his head and put it on Cybertron, and Cybertron was going to become Unicron's body. Right. That's uh, what I'm saying. What series is he talking about? Because there's no, I don't not remember that from the from our childhood. I don't know either. I don't either. Either way, like like, so apparently all this takes place at Stonehenge too. Stonehenge is like the middle ground where like the staff has to go, and basically Cybertron is going to come in and destroy Earth, but drain Earth, drain Earth. But Merlin's descendant grabs the staff miraculously. Optimus Prime comes, saves the day. The last knights who formed to be this huge dragon are there, and uh, Megatron's kind of in the movie, but not really. Even though he should be dead, and it should be Galvatron based on Transformers Optimus 4. Prime is in it, but not really. Yeah, yeah. Bumblebee's in it a lot, and and Bumblebee, like as we know, his voice box is broke through the last four movies. He's supposed to get a voice box back now. It's, he sounds like Siri, so he rips it out, so he still has his little uh, radio thing. But miraculously. Optimus, when he's a bad guy, goes to kill, and right when he's about to give the kill shot to Bumblebee, his voice miraculously returns. No explanation. Oh, and by the way, after he was saved, he's back to talking radio again. Yeah. And the big end credit scene was this, like, Asian, Indian, Arab-looking girl walking through that the desert. That was uh, Contessa. Was that Contessa? Contessa. But she, she seemed like she was a part of Unicron. Yeah, because she can, she can, no, no, she, uh, she has just assumed that form. Oh, well, either way, she said Unicron doesn't like this or like that. Like, you remember the Transformer? I forget what movie it was, but wasn't the trans? I think it was in the first one where she assumes it looks like a person, but it's really Transformer, and that weird shit comes out of the mouth. Oh, that, no, that was the second one. That was the second one. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of deal. Yes. Oh. Uh, so I think Contessa might be that kind of thing. Maybe. Either way. So basically, this movie was supposed to set up a Bumblebee solo film. I don't know how it did that. Um, but it definitely did set up a Transformer 6 with Unicron being the planet. Right. Um, but Mark, I've heard rumors, I've read rumors that Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg is isn't done. done. He's not yeah. going to do Transformers Thank God. 6. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, this movie was really just a bunch of shit thrown together. Like, I, I wish I could be more enthused and say more, but I can't. I mean, the action was horrible, too. The action was bad. 
there was a lack of transforming. Like I think of the first Transformers movie, which was pretty good. It was good, yeah. I like you know, it. you know the action on the military base, like action yeah. in the city, the action on the, the freeway. You know, like a lot of great shit happening. Yeah, but even the last one, which was panned, uh, which not a lot of people liked either. At least yeah. that had really good action. It was nice to look at. This was just like it a did. mess. And we saw the Return of Hound, which is uh, which is um, right. John Goodman. Mm -hmm. We saw those Asian robots return. Grimlock and the Dinobots were in it. Kind of in the beginning and, and during this junkyard scene, but they, that's it. they weren't in the final battle. Oh, I think Grimlock was for like a second. Yeah. Uh, so bad. And, and, and then like Megatron was there with a bunch of other bad guys I've never heard of before. Starscream's dead, apparently beheaded. Uh, it was just bad. Nah. I wish I could say more, but I, I can't. <laughs> you made me go. All right, anyway, so that's Transformers The Last Night. Go watch it like, if you want. You know, it's two and a half hours. Anthony Hopkins would act like Anthony Hopkins in so every bad. Anthony Hopkins thing. I, I, I'm like, is this Westworld? He, so he, he, he acted just like the guy from Westworld. He said dude. Did he say dude? Oh, he dies in the movie. Spoilers. Yeah. John Turturro didn't need to be in it. Cuba didn't need to be in it. Bumblebee as a World War II agent in Nazi Germany didn't need to be in it. Right. They didn't even need to do the whole last night thing and the night they didn't have to do the, the staff. Night. Like they could have just done the whole contestant mating. It, which we didn't even get to know Contessa. She was no. in the movie for a total of five. She it didn't even seem like a bad guy. It's like I, I don't. She kind of remind me of Enchantress from uh, Suicide Squad. Horrible. Yeah. Rad. Anyways, so that's Transformers last night. Um. Anyways, uh, if, if I gotta rate my Transformer movies in order from worst to best, uh, this is by far the worst Transformers movie ever. Absolutely. Transformers The Last Night. I would say Transformers Age of Extinction would be right above that. And then after mm -hmm. that, I'd probably go uh, uh, Dark of the Moon. No. Then I'd probably go Revenge of the Fallen. <laughs> then I'd probably go Transformers 1. Mm -hmm. And then the best Transformers movie is, obviously, in my opinion, the cartoon movie from the 80s. No, I agree. So you're saying that the next Transformers will be just unwatchable. Unwatchable. So basically, they are in order from best to worst in the order that they came out. Yes. So thank you, Michael Bay. Um, I like your cinematography, but that's not even you. You have a cinematographer. Um, I don't mind your slow mo. Painting game was pretty good. I don't mind your occasional lens flares, but for the most part, the story the story is bad. It's bad. It's bad. And shame on the rest of the fucking movie verse for copying the designs of Transformers, like Marvel Studios making the Chitauri people look like Transformers with their like things, like it's a bad design. It, it is. It's just it's fucking bad. Which by the way, Optimus. Is the truck for like thirty seconds in yeah, a movie? Yeah. Also, I, I don't. I wish that in these movies that they would make the colors a little brighter. Something. They, they just like look like all metal, like bunches of metal usually. The only thing I liked about this movie, in all honesty, was that Chevrolet wasn't the sponsor, so I actually saw other cars right. transform into yeah, yeah. fucking robots instead of a fucking like, you know, Chevy yeah. Volt. You know, or a, 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 a Malibu. Right. <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, so en enough of the movie. Movie sucks. Uh, to make this episode it. worth a damn, we have listed our worst, best, and honorable mention Transformers. I have a list that one hasn't seen, one has a list that I haven't seen. I will go first. I have five honorable mentions, and it was re this was really tough for me. And it's a combination of both cartoon and, and movie Transformers in our list, but... Uh, in no particular order on my uh, on on my honorable man, did that guy just kick the yeah, car? Yeah, he just kicked the car. Oh, it's his car though, so it's okay. Uh, whatever. whatever. There's a guy on the parking lot kicking cars. Um, oh, by the way, guys, um, we'll talk about it later. Honorable mention. My first honorable mention is the Devastator from the movie, which will be Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Wow. That's my honorable, honorable mention. mention. It's my honorable mention as as and uh, yeah, and this is why. Ooh. Listen. It was massive. It was huge. The way he came together was massive. Yeah. He was scary. It was a very interesting way to transform yeah. all the stuff. I, I enjoyed Devastator from the movie. I did. Okay. He's my honorable mention. Not good enough to be my top ten, but definitely one of the five honorable mentions. Sure. Go. From the cartoon, Swindle. I don't even know Swindle. What did he? Was he Decepticon or Autobot? Decepticon. 
What did he transform into? I just liked him because he talked a lot of shit. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't even know, but okay. So he was a, he was a dealer. All right. <laughs> Uh, Hot Rod Generation 1 from the movie made his debut in the movie and was gone after the movie because it became Rodimus Prime Rodimus Prime is nowhere on my list fuck you Rodimus Prime Hot Rod is better Thundercrack the Starscream wannabe Thundercracker yeah, yeah. alright that's fine I, I, I thought him uh, okay. you didn't like him I know dude. he was really arrogant no he's good he's good right. go ahead RC Made her debut oh. in uh, in the movie. You know, it's like one of the only female Transformers. It's also one of the only bikes, aside from the other bike, during the uh, Weird Al, Dare to be Stupid, Junkyard thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoyed RC. I thought RC was good. I like her. Are the junkyard. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pets. RC. Blitzwing. If he wants to know if we can turn it down. We're almost done. We're almost done. Go ahead. Um, my other honorable mention is Cup. Who? From Cup from uh, the movie as well. He was the like the kind of pickup truck wannabe. Uh -huh. um, hold on one second, Batsy. Can you can you can you do me a favor, my friend? Can you tell her we do this for one hour a week? Can you tell her we're done in like ten minutes? Yeah, and this is like Thank one you. hour a week. Thank you. Yeah. Cup from Generation One. Uh, uh, he was the guy with the little hat. He was like the old timer that would talk to Hot Rod and be like, "Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not I, very memorable." I, 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 I liked him a lot. So what I say? I said Thundercrack, Swindle, Blitzwing. I already said. No, you didn't. Blitzwing. Oh, Blitzwing. Blitzwing. Okay. Again, I'm just a huge fan of Starscream. So okay. All right. I got the team. Uh, my my number five uh, honorable mention would be Jazz from Generation One. The oh, cartoon. I forgot about Jazz. Jazz who transformed into 911, who had the almost like the Herbie like uh, like graphics on his car, mm -hmm. the race car graphics. Uh, great. Jazz in the movie horrible. The fact that he was a neat uh, uh, a oh, Pontiac they, they killed his ass too, Pontiac, right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, they killed his ass. Yeah, they killed him nasty in the first movie. Yeah. Megatron like ripped him in half, which is awesome. Why the first movie was actually good. Yeah, they killed unexpected. Him. Yeah, unexpected. So that's my top five honorable mentions. Your um, number five? The no, I'm missing two. I did Thundercrack, Blitzwing, Swindle, uh, Blackout. Okay. And uh, Ravager. Ravager. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm keeping him as a separate transformer. All right. No, it's fine. I I, I hate I, my honorable mentions. I thought it was Ravage. Wasn't it Ravage? Is it Ravage? The, the, you're talking about the cat, right? Yeah, the cat. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. belongs to uh, to Soundwave. Yeah. Soundwave. Yeah, I think it's Ravage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ravage is great. He didn't make my list, but I, he I wanted. And him and Ravage, I I really really like him in the in the film, like the, the design. He was really cool. Well, which one do you like? Which one hits your thing? The the movie version? Oh or no, the cartoon. cartoon. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, top three worst. I didn't do the top three words, but I'll try to do it off the top of my head. Go ahead. Well, I'll give you my first one. Soundwave made his debut in Revenge of the Fallen. All he did in the fucking movie was attach himself to a satellite and circle Earth. Soundwave is like the right-hand man of Megatron in the cartoon verse. He is amazing. He comes with amazing fucking tapes that turn into amazing things. Yeah. And he had, like, little, if any, role in the movie. So the movie version of Soundwave is the biggest fucking piece of shit. The little, the ghetto robots. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, the little green one. I don't even know what their names are. What were they, Randall? Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the one with the gold tooth. Oh, like, come on, man. Yeah, that was terrible. Oh. Yes, I'm with you. So that's uh, my, my, my top my, two. My, my, second, my second worst, Starscream in the movie. First of all, his design was horrible. Like, just copied the design from the cartoon. It was perfect. It made sense. Instead, now they got, like, the wings and whatever, and, and, and Starscream. I hated it. You're number one? Uh, Bumblebee from the from the car cartoons. Oh, really? I'll go with Bumblebee from the cartoons, yeah. Why? Hmm? Why is he your worst? Didn't like him. All right. That's a bold <laughs> That's a bold thing. Yeah. I didn't like him either. He's not on my list at all. He's just... But he doesn't make my worst. My and, worst... And I think the reason why it aggravates me so much is I didn't mind him in the cartoon, but they've since... It's, it's weird how they're centering almost this Transformers universe around Bumblebee instead of Optimus Prime. I agree. Which has made me hate Bumblebee even more. I agree. I agree. I agree. The Bumblebee is a big deal in the movie verse for some reason. Yeah, um, that's who they chose like out of everyone. You know what it was? Bumblebee in the cartoon, I think in the movie, is is the bridge between the Transformers and the humans. He's the one that makes that, that makes it them work together. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, that they made him kind of adorable. Yeah. yeah, so he's like probably why I hate it. He's too. like the bridge, so that's probably why. But anyways, and there's another. As, as my, my list is done, you'll realize why I hate Bumblebee the most. My my number one worst is Megatron from the movie. 
I, for nothing against Agent Smith. What's his name? Agent Hugo Smith. Weaving. Hugo Weaving. Nothing against Hugo. <laughs> nothing against Hugo Why Weaving. Why don't you do this fucking podcast, Rich? Let me the fuck out of here. <laughs> How the fuck do you know this? Why do you say his name? His name's not racist. I'm yeah. sorry, Batsy. Yes. Um, anyways, so, so, nothing is Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving is great. His voice is great. It's sinister. It's great. But, uh, it's great. But the design of Megatron is horrible in the movie. Fucking horrible. I don't know if he's a gun. I don't know if he's a tank. He's been so many different things in the movie. Yeah. He fell apart a couple times. He was Galvatron for a little bit. It's just a horrible execution of a great villain. The Decepticons were just completely just ruined in the movies. There were a few good ones. Like, the, the, the Mustang cop is great. Oh, sh- he made my list. Okay, well, anyways. All right, so that's our that, that's our five honorable mentions and our three worst. Time to get to the real thing. Top ten, top in, ten in order. In order. Ten being, ten being the least, one being the best. Juan, what's your number ten? Barricade. You just mentioned him. You need to d- define... Okay, I'm sorry. That's right. Barricade from the movie. Great. Why? Um, right. I thought his design was really cool. He Great. looked really awesome. Actually transformed a few times. Did some shit. One of the few Transformers that wasn't a Chevy. Yeah, He was exactly. a Ford Mustang. Which, right. bold for, for Chevy to allow that since, yeah. since the original Transformers was the debut of the Car- Camaro, the new redesign of the Camaro, and they allow their number one competitor, the, the Mustang, to be in the movie. And, if you remember mm-hmm. correctly, when we saw Bumblebee become the robot in yeah. the movie, that's when he fought Barricade yeah. in that junkyard. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I think and he, uh, he was great. Barricade was great in uh, last night. This yeah. movie that just came out. Yeah. So Barricade was, has been consistent throughout, and also I believe all actual cops are Decepticons in real life. So, <laughs> wow. Well, I do not agree with that point right there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, at all, at all. Please. Okay. Anyways, my number ten is Ironhide from the movie. Ironhide from the movie. Let's let's basically like, Ironhide from the cartoon was a sh- shitty fucking neat like Nissan Red minivan, okay? Who got killed nasty style in the movie. Like 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 Starscream took Megatron's pistol and just shot him and he like burned out at the eyes and the mouth and that's the end of Ironhide. Mm-hmm. In the in the movie though, he was this huge GMC truck with huge guns and he was actually pretty he was kind of a badass. Yeah. Uh he died nasty. Like one of the primes in the third movie I guess like put some acid on him and he like literally disintegrated in front yeah. of us. But uh Ironhide from the movie, my number Ironhide was cool in the cartoon, too. He was, but he doesn't make my list. Number nine, go. Number nine, Astro Train from the cartoon. I for, I'm not going to lie. I, I totally forgot about Astro Train, and Astro Train is great. Yeah. First of all, this is why Astro Train is great. He was one of those toys that turned into three yes. things. Yes, yes. Yeah. Triple changer. Yeah. He was a train, he was a space shuttle, space shuttle, and then he was the robot. Yeah, because Astro Train's job is to transport people. Yeah. And That's somehow it. he fit, can fit a whole army inside him. I know. I know, yeah. as we saw in the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Astro Train from the cartoon. The cartoon movie. Yes. Yeah, great. Was that? I don't even know if Astro Train was in the actual live action movie. But anyways. Nope. My number nine is the cartoon Devastator. Now, let me make something clear. The, the five or six robots by themselves are fucking idiots. They're like, ooh, like doing stupid clumsy things. And they're like almost a comic relief in the cartoon. But when they come together to form Devastator... Like, they have some serious business. And you really see how evil Devastator is in the cartoon movie when when um, when when Megatron tells them to destroy Autobot City and they literally just rip into Autobot City and, like, beat the fuck out of it. Devastator, my number nine. Number eight, um, I'm going to go with Soundwave from the cartoon. Ooh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I know that's number eight. And Wow. I know, man. Wow. Okay, well, why? Well, uh, well obviously because... Wow. So if I was drafting a team of Transformers, I'd probably draft Soundwave first. Okay. Just because all the cassettes that bump, pump out of his chest like turn into very useful Transformers. Right. For the record, his cassettes do not count as part of Soundwave on the list. They don't, but that's a cool ability to have. It is a cool ability. I wish I could shoot shit out my chest. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be all like dark emotions and shit, but... <laughs> okay, that's uh, yeah. So actually, so Soundwave from the car. I know that's really high, but there's yeah, reason. Yeah. You'll see. All right, all right. So Soundwave is my number eight. My number eight is... Also cool design, right? Great design. There's nothing that reminds me of the, like, of the 80s, like uh, cassette players, right? Yeah, great design. And, and shame... I mean, it's a shame we'll never get that version of Soundwave anymore yeah. because cassette players don't exist. Right. Nor do uh, CD yeah. players. So, like, I mean, what are they going to do? Make an iPod. iPhone? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do Soundwave. That's Soundwave. Yeah. Anyways, my number eight is the movie version of Optimus Prime because... 
first of all, Peter Cullen, the voice from the cartoon, still the voice in the movies. It's Optimus Prime, you know, and he's number eight on my list, which is high up there too. I mean, it's Optimus. His design was really good in the movie. Design was really good too, especially in the first one. And Did you feel like in the first one he the red like he was brighter, like you could yes. tell it was Optimus. Right. In the last one, you it, it's like doled yeah. down. Not to mention Optimus in Age of Extinction when he right. was he was he before he revealed himself and he had his original flat face mm -hmm. in that white truck. Fucking amazing. Yeah, that was actually Optimus 8, number 8 on my list from the movie. 7? Number 7, Bruticus from the cartoons. Bruticus is great. Why Bruticus? Bruticus is Starscream's version of Devastator. No, Bruticus is great. And I like him because he was made from military vehicles, except they were all fucking retarded. So he was pretty stupid. It seems like all, all the ones funny. that come together are dumb. Are dumb. Yeah. Because there are some of the parts, and they're all just like broken I can't out. believe you put Bruticus ahead of Soundwave, though. Yeah. Uh, because of his association with Starscream. Okay, whatever. I mean, I I'm sure everyone right now knows who my number one all is. Right. Anyways, okay, all right. You're fucking crazy. My number seven is Laserbeak. If you, don't <laughs> you just talk shit about me. Yeah. What the fuck? Laserbeak over Optimus Prime? From the movie? Yes. Laserbeak in the cartoon is fucking stealth- he is fucking... He is like your secret agent that you want on your team. In every movie, he's always like hiding in the shadows, fucking filming shit, transmitting that shit to Megatron and Soundwave, and he is like your evil fucking piece of shit little thorn in your side spy. Laserbeak is fucking awesome. No, disagree. Things dumb. <laughs> Number six. No, well, wait, who's your seven? Oh, was it we did. Oh, oh, Number yeah. six, Cyclonus. Cyclonus is good from, yeah. from the from the actual movie. Yeah, he was uh, mind was he was mind controlled yeah. by uh, Unicron, Cyclonus and he actually great. took over for a while, right? Uh, I don't know if he took over. Not in the movie, maybe in the. Country. But you know, I really like him also because he's like super powerful, yeah. and uh, but he's also like really really loyal. Yeah. The whole all hail Galvatron, like that's yeah. him. Yeah. So I, I really like him because he's really loyal and powerful, and he can, if he wanted to, he could lead the Decepticons. Happy, yeah. Cyclonus was great. Yeah. Good, good call. Great design, too. My number six is Starscream from Generation 1, the cartoon. All right, why isn't it higher on the list? I'll tell you why it's not higher on the list. Because Starscream had a great design, but he was a bitch. He was no, a he fucking, wasn't a bitch. He was a whiny Whole. fucking sellout. He was all, No, he wasn't a sellout. He was niche. He was the true Decepticon. No, he was a bitch. He was the... No, he was Judas. Oh he was the backstabber. So you're saying that he was a deceiver? Yes. He was the ultimate deceiver. Fuck you. Okay, I He's a fucking it. Decepticon! No, shut up, shut up. No, no. <laughs> Starscream, Starscream is a bitch at the end of the day. He would stab Megatron in the back at, at, at any... Decepticon. But, but then when Megatron found out and came to him, he would, he would cower like a little fucking bitch. Plus, Starscream can regen... He can live forever. No, who said that? He has a spark. He he can regenerate. He has a spark, the un, unquenchable spark thing. Really? He's like a mutant. Yeah. All right, I I don't know about that. Either way, Starscream is my number six because he's a bitch. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Your number five? Unicron. Is do you got anything? Big bad. He's a world eater. He's Galactus. I put Galactus in my top ten. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Number five. So number, number five, five is Unicron. Just that. Okay. Unicron to Galactus. My number five is the movie version of Bumblebee. <laughs> you like terrible Transformers. No, listen. The movie version of Bumblebee is actually great. He transforms great. His little radio talking is great. That's actually pretty cool. His fighting scenes are solid. Like, in every movie... Th like, Juan is right. Bumblebee got the spotlight in all these movies. They wanted Bumblebee to, like, be the focus. The epicenter right. of, the, of the Autobots. And they made it show. He got so much screen time in every movie. And... And he, he's really the heart and soul of the movies, is, and, uh, and his fight scenes are amazing. Everything, Bumblebee. Fine, whatever. What number are we on? Four. Shockwave. I was going to put him on my list, but he's a bitch too. But go on, tell me why he's good. I like Shockwave because he's probably the smartest Decepticon. He just sits in a room and looks at a screen the whole time and operates a transporter. He's a genius. He's like fucking, what's his and name? And he's also emotionless. Whatever. He's the smartest Decepticon. That's why I like him. He's good. I mean, he's a gun, And he too. turns into a gun. He turns into a gun. Yeah, he's from the cartoon, obviously. Yeah. The actual toy was a gun a, a human being yep. can hold. So I actually yeah. liked Shockwave. 
My number four is Unicron. Because uh, he eats worlds. Because he's amazing. Like, first of all, when you see him destroy that planet in the beginning of the movie, like, amazing. When when you see, like, all beat up Megatron and his people come and, and Orson Welles, who is the voice of Unicron, yeah, Orson is, Welles, is right. literally like, that actually is oh, you're good, oh, you're good, and turns, you know, and when, when Megatron's like, I will not be good, and he like pauses, and then totally like goes into like submissive mode, oh. and you see him turn, like, I also like that. Unicron you know, just... speaking of Unicron, I, also, I, I mean, I know I didn't mention much, but I was pretty sure he was going to make your list. The fact that to serve him, you basically go insane. Yes. Yeah. U Unicron is good. Not to mention, when he, he transformed into the huge robot at the end, it was amazing. And let's be real, the exterior of Unicron is crazy. The interior of Unicron yeah. is crazy. We spent a good portion of that movie inside his body, and there's right. some crazy shit happening. Yeah. There. So, Unicron. Lord of Chaos. Unicron, my number four. Your number three. Bone Crusher from the movie. Good. And I'll tell you why. I can't. Believe, I can't believe you put that be, oh, before so many other ones. Please. I, uh, before Unicron. Before Soundwave. Yeah, yeah. You better have a good excuse. Before. Before it's Astro Train. For one specific scene. What? You know the, what it is? When they're on the highway. Yes, absolutely. That's I think the coolest set piece in the in the Transformers movies. It and is. That's really why good. I give it to it. No, it's good. When he's actually chasing and slinging cars all over the place, like yes. he looks like a badass transforming Decepticon. I agree. Like so, I like it because I think there were some pure like Transformers moment moments where I felt like I was watching my cartoon come to life. Yes. Uh, Optimus Prime in the first one, the first time I saw him being one of them. That scene with Bone Crusher, like that. That's probably my favorite scene with a Decepticon. Uh, he's great. The perfect sidekick, also just amazing. So yeah, sure. I got I got nothing bad to say about Sunway. Yeah, Sunway's great. Other than he's amazing. Even though in the movie we see a scene of him on Cybertron when it's getting attacked by Unicron, and he's like, ah. but we won't talk about that. Go on. Number, number two. two. Yeah. Devastator from the cartoons. Oh, I can't believe you put that so high up. Number two. Why? Because they're such bitches. You like bitches, dude. And, and, I don't, and I don't mean... I don't, I don't you mean, like guys. I don't like, mean, what the I, fuck? Like, it is what it is. Anyway, what's your number two? Go. All right. Number two is Devastator. And the reason is because he was one giant fucking awesome Transformer. And um, it's a shame this list is here. Mostly the toy is what really, like, inspires this. See, here's the problem. The, 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 Did you ever play with the toy? I had the Devastator toy. And wasn't it the best Transformers toy? Actually, it wasn't. And this is why. Oh. Because it was the same... <laughs> it was like it was like two... It was like, it was like an inch bigger than Optimus Prime. Because it would have cost too much if they were made it huge. But no. the, I had imagination. But as a child. kudos, Hasbro. <laughs> Hasbro came out with a Devastator like, since then. like a couple years ago where it was actually tall and amazing. Which I wish I got. I had it in the store here and I didn't get it and now it's gone forever. <laughs> Fuck you. Do you have it? I didn't buy it. Oh, I was going to say sell it to me. No, no. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, okay, I can't believe you put him your number two. The toy. You're fucking lame. Anyways, your number one. How about my number, number two? two. I'm sure. my number. This guy didn't make your list? My number two is Megatron. No, he didn't make my list. Holy shit, Juan. Because he's the biggest bitch Whoa. of them all. Megatron in the cartoon. Bitch. Megatron in the cartoon is my number two because Megatron the is... The emperor with no clothes. He is fucking... Fuck you, yeah. And the number one, which, by the way, you want to know something about my list? My big fan, did you notice something about my list? What? There's absolutely no Autobots. Did you, like, do that on purpose? On purpose. Of course. And also because I believe Autobots are bitches. Autobots? Autobots. Uh, hi, okay. Number one. Autobotsies? Starscream. <laughs> Starscream. <laughs> from the cartoons. Please tell me where Starscream from the cartoons is your number one. He, because, so apparently, bitch. I love Decepticons. <laughs> And Starscream is the best Decepticon. He fills the role perfectly. I love that he's arrogant, that he Frank. believes he can do Megatron's job better. Frank Welker. Frank, Frank Welker was Megatron. And Frank from, you know, my childhood, I did watch G.I. Joe's, and uh, I also loved uh, Cobra Commander, who Same does voice. his voice. There you go. It's best 
and uh, and and uh, it's Star great. Scream is so good. It's great. <laughs> it, Optimus Prime is amazing. Now listen, for all you people out there that are like, no Dinobots. No, fuck the Dinobots. They were stupid. Okay. Grimlock's cool. Grimlock's cool, but he was dumb. Me, Grimlock. Yeah, I know he was. He was pretty dumb, but Grimlock's cool. They actually didn't go in the movie. You don't uh, think so? Uh, whatever. Who cares? It was whatever. It was a T Rex. Right, it was a T Rex that that, had, that 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 looked like a Chitari fucking thing. Whatever. Um, it, uh, because I know people are gonna hate on us for not putting the Dinobots. I can't believe you you put Soundwave so far down above all these other fuckers though. I like them. Whatever. Anyway, and you have no Autobots. That's just you being a bitch. That's. Terrible. I'm not. I don't like any of the. Paramount's going to keep making Transformer movies the same way Fox is going to keep making X-Men and Fantastic Four movies. Yeah. We will see another Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. Just like Disney and Marvel are going to keep making new movies and Warner Brothers are going to keep making their movies because it, it's it, it's going to happen. Even 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 The Mummy, they're going to make another one because even though it did really bad domestically, it made enough money internationally, they're going to keep that dark universe going. The Transformers is going to keep going. Now, is it going to look the same? Is it going to be the Michael Bay? No, probably not. Um, they really they just need good writers that's really what they need they need good writers it, it's crazy because you figure that the story would be the easier part to number one it will always be the base of my childhood yes thank you yeah a, 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 the base of the word basic as well shut up uh Ivan Uffret said uh, that for the movies, you mentioned how Chevy and Ford it was included in that, though. So don't forget that a cor uh, the new Corvette premiered in the Transformer movie, too. Oh, it did, yeah. In this one? Not in this one. Not in this one. one. Not this one. one. Oh, the earlier ones. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, if you want to give us your top ten list, reply back on Facebook uh, under the comment section. Give your top ten or any comments regarding Transformers. We'd love to hear what they are. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, we're sorry we're a day late. We had something going on yesterday, so we couldn't do this for you. But uh... I'm proud to be an American. I'll be working. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's our show. Thank you very much. Thanks, special thanks to Randall Batsy, of course.